Hi guys, it's Inventor Andy here, and today we're going to be looking at reading and writing to serial flash memory using the SPI drivers. So the Explain Pro board for the D21 has a serial flash chip on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the SPI drivers to read and write to this. So that's the serial flash chip. And there's quite a bit of code for this one, so I've split it into three tutorials. The first one we're going to write our header file for the flash library. The second video will cover the code for the functions in the flash library. And the third will look at the actual program to test a read and a write and an erase operation. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so if you open your browser and go to start.atmel.com and when that's loaded, click create new project. Okay, so when that page is loaded, we're going to go to show only boards and we're going to scroll down and we're going to find the D21 Explain Pro board. Select that and create, click create new project. Okay, so let's go ahead and rename that project. Let's call this, let's just call this SPI Flash. Okay, click rename. And then we're gonna add some drivers. So we're gonna add the SPI driver and we're going to add the USART driver. So if you click on plus there with drivers, scroll down to SPI, and add that. And then scroll down to USART and add that as well. Click add components. Okay, so next we're gonna select the SPI driver. Let's rename that to serial flash. Now we need to make sure this is hooked up to the pins that are routed to the serial flash on the board. So if we go to pin marks and we stretch out this header and label fields. Okay, so scroll down, we want to find the MISO Mosey and SCK pins for the serial flash. So if you look at PB16 here, that's the serial flash slave out. So MISO means master in slave out. So PB16 is master in slave out. Go back to dashboard and we look for master in slave out. And we're going to set that to PB16. I'm going to go back to our pin marks and we need to find the MOSI pin. So scroll down again. So serial flash MOSI is 22. And the PB23 is a serial clock. So if we go back to our dashboard. PB22 and PB23. And now we need to find the slave select. So SPI, you can chain multiple devices to the same input and output lines. And the way you differentiate between which device you want to communicate with is by pulling the chip select line low. So go back to pin marks. And we want to find the slave select pin. So serial flash chip chip select. So serial flash chip select. And we're going to call this serial flash CS. And we're going to set that to a digital output pin. And the initial level is high. So we only pull it low when we want to communicate with the device. Okay, go back to our dashboard. And if we select the SPI master async driver, and all of the other settings should be correct as default. So our board rate is 50,000. 
which is low enough to communicate with this kind of serial flash device. Character size is 8 bits and we've got a receive buffer enabled. Okay, now let's configure our USART driver. So let's rename this debug out. And we want USART async. We're going to set our board rate to 38400, which is what the embedded debugger chip uses. Now we need to find our TX and RX pins. Okay, so if we scroll down to our virtual COM port, there we go. So 22, PA22 is the virtual COM port TX and PA23 is the virtual COM port RX. So let's go ahead and set those. RX is 23, TX is 22. Okay, and the final thing we're going to do is we're going to assign a name for our LED pin. So we go back to pin max. And let's find our LED zero pin. Okay, so that's PB30. We're going to call this status LED. So we'll set the pin mode to digital output and we'll set the initial level to low. So the LED is off when we first initialize the device. Okay, let's go back to our dashboard, make sure everything looks correct. And let's go ahead and export the project. So let's call this 04 SPI flash. Make sure Atmel Studio is selected and click download pack. So save it somewhere you'll remember. Okay, so once that's downloaded, go ahead and open the Atmel start file. Make sure it's saved somewhere appropriate. okay to bring in all the code. Okay, so what we're going to do for this part of the tutorial is we're going to create our serial flash library. So if we right click the project and click add, click new item, and we're going to select include file and we're going to call this ext flash make sure it's a dot h extension which means header file and click add okay let's get rid of this pre-written nonsense and we're going to wrap this in a defined loop to make sure that the file isn't included more than once Okay, so we're going to include a couple of the STD libraries. So let's include STD lib 
and std bool. Okay. Next, we're going to include the files we need for the driver initialization. Okay, so now we're going to define some instruction codes which are used for communicating with the flash device. So most of these are universal across serial flash chips. So once you've written this library, you can, with a few minor modifications, use it for any SPI flash device that you might have connected to your board. So. Okay, so this first command is to read the device and manufacturer IDs from the chip itself. The next one is our read the status register. So this is how we read the device to see whether it's busy or whether it's ready for a new command. So flash cmd read status and the code for this is 05 next is our program command so this is to write to the flash device and the code for this is 02 The next command is our read command, so we read data from the flash device, and this is 03. Our next command is write enable, so we enable the flash device for writing to it. So. that is 0, 06 and the final command we're going to be using today is the sector arrays so this erases a block of memory on the flash device Okay, so now we're going to define the busy bit of the status register. And this is 0x1. Okay, so now we're going to define some part specific constants. So these are specific to this serial flash device. So our program page size is 256 bytes. By the way, if you're wondering where I've got this information from, you can get it from the data sheet for the flash memory device. Okay, so we're going to set the array sector size, which is 4 kilobytes, so 0x1000. Now we're going to set the maximum command size. Which is five bytes.
and our final definition is the manufacturer ID for the Adesto chip. Which is 1F. Okay, so now we're going to create a struct to store information on the memory device. Type def struct, and we've got the device size, which is a 32 bit int. We've got an 8 bit unsigned int for the manufacturer ID. bit unsigned in for the device ID. And let's call this ext flash info t. Okay, so now we're going to set an IO descriptor for the SPI communications. And finally, we're going to define our functions. So the first one is to initialize the flash. So this is a void function. And now we're going to define our methods for reading and writing and erasing and all that other stuff. Methods. Now notice we're using the external keyword here, so this means external function. We've got our setup function, and we're going to have our open function, so this opens the device ready for reading. Next we've got our read function, which takes an offset, which is the location in memory to read from. The number of bytes we want to read. And the buffer to store the read data into. Next is our write function. Again, we take an offset, which is the location in memory, a size for the amount of data we want to write, and the data we actually want to write. So const uint. Finally, we're going to have our erase command. So, external, and we're going to take our memory location, so where to erase from, and the amount of data we want to erase. Okay, so that's our header file. Go ahead and save. In part two of the tutorial, we're going to write out some of the code for these functions and get ready for our test application. See you in a bit, guys. Hi, guys, it's Inventor Andy here. Thank you for watching my video. If you like the video, please click like, please subscribe to my channel, and please feel free to add any comments if you've got any suggestions for tutorials or videos that I can do. Thanks very much, guys.